an auditory researcher, a neuroscientist. I have my training long time ago. I used to be an audiologist, actually, but um, I got my PhD in physiology. And I have uh, maintained my interest in the auditory system, although I'm also very interested in multisensory integration. So I study sensory integration at the very first level of the auditory system in the cochlear nucleus. We have been studying how tinnitus is generated in the first part of the brain, the cochlear nucleus, and we're very interested in trying to separate out the effect of tinnitus from the effect of hearing loss. And that's why we use a model of temporary threshold shift, which is also called hidden hearing loss these days. So these in animal studies, this would be equivalent to humans who have no threshold shift. So if they go to the audiologist, they get measured a normal audiogram. But if you were to look at super threshold hearing, there would be deficits in that. And that would be caused by cochlear synaptopathy. So in our animal studies, we're able to titrate our noise damage so that we uh, get very minimal cochlear damage in the, the form of just synapse damage. There's no hair cell damage and there's no threshold shift. And then we start to look at animals that have behavioral evidence of tinnitus compared to those that do not have behavioral evidence of tinnitus. Well, it would be the same as humans who have uh, normal audiograms and comparing those humans that get tinnitus compared to those that do not get tinnitus. But the advantage of having the animal studies is that we can look inside their brains and record from single cells as well as look at the synapses in the cochleas. It's important that translational research comes from basic science because I think especially in the tinnitus field, there are many studies where people will just try things like a fishing expedition. Well, we'll try this or we'll try that. And I think when you do that, you get many, many different kinds of treatments that don't really have a basis in science. And so what we've tried very hard to do is to do very rigorous basic science that just out of the basic science itself came out of possibility of a treatment of tinnitus. And so I would encourage people, if they want to get into doing tinnitus treatments, that they first try to look at the basic science so that they can um, decipher a technique that, that they could test in an animal model first to give clues as to what would work in an animal model before taking it into a human population. Well, we had a very promising result that we published in Science Translational Medicine last year. And the exciting part of that research was that it came directly out of the studies with animals. And also that we were very careful to do a well-controlled clinical trial in which we were double-blinded and we had a crossover so that every subject received a sham treatment and also the active treatment so that, that each subject was their own control. And I think it's very important to do a clinical trial like that, especially with tinnitus because the placebo effect is very strong in people with tinnitus. So people can often try something and just the fact that they've tried something will initially help the tinnitus patient, but that's not doing a treatment a service because you want to very carefully control your trial so that you, you really know whether this is working or not. And it's not just a chance effect or a placebo effect. So in our second trial, we're being even more rigorous than we were in our first trial. And we hope we'll have some results by the middle of next year. So the treatment is um, based off of the circuitry in the dorsal cochlear nucleus in which the somatosensory input is integrated with the auditory input to produce long-term plasticity in these cells. And what our treatment does is it harnesses this plasticity and so we, where we combine a somatosensory stimulus, which is an electrical stimulus that we either put on the cheek, which is trigeminal, or on the neck, which is dorsal column stimulation, and which we've tested in the animals and we show how these particular signals activate these fusiform cells that generate the tinnitus. So in our treatment, our aim is to reduce the hyperactivity of these cells by inducing long-term depression. And that, that is what the, the treatment aims to do.
With regard to collaboration between different disciplines, I think the field is moving in a good direction because I think there are more people who study different parts of the brain who are talking to each other and listening to each other. And I think that's really the key is for researchers who work in the cortex to talk to people who work in the cochlear nucleus or the cochlea or the midbrain or the thalamus so that we try to get an understanding of the whole system rather than you know different parts of the systems. And I think that's, that's why meetings like the TRI are very important so that these researchers can come together and have a dialogue and move forward from there. Well, in the coming decade, I think that there are numerous treatments that are coming out of basic science that are going to come to fruition and be able to help all of those people out there who are counting on us.